So I just finished a little experiment um, up in my dark room and I thought you might find the results rather interesting. So I've always read a lot about using selenium to intensify and increase contrast in your negatives, but it turns out you can also use sepia toning to get even greater contrast out of your negatives. Now, some of the information for this I got out of the Photographer's Toning Book by Tim, uh, Tim Rudman. And this is a great book. And then I have another book by him too, where he goes into like mercury uh, intensification. And I didn't have any mercury in my darkroom, so I didn't include that in this test, but I did test selenium toner and thiocarbamide or sepia toner. In this video, I'm gonna share the results and the comparisons of those tests. So I had a roll of film and it's one of those rolls where it just was kind of hanging around my darkroom and I had no notes on it. I kind of forgot what it was. So I figured it wasn't that important. You know, the, you know, the kind of film that was this roll of film. So it was a roll of FP4, I had no notes, had no idea what I shot it, but it was in my pile of film to develop. So I had an odd uh, number of T-Max film from that shoot I did. So I threw this FP4 in with the Ektal and just, and just developed it to get it done. And it turns out there were some macro shots on my Hasselblad and it looks like I didn't use any um, bellows compensation. So they were underdeveloped and then they were, or they were underexposed, sorry, and even a little bit underdeveloped. And I have the contact sheet here and some of them were really weak. Some of them actually looked pretty good, but some of them were really uh, low contrast and a little underdeveloped. So I thought these would be good negatives to test on as I wasn't too concerned about the negatives overall. So I chose two negatives. One was a close up of a flower and then the other was just some uh, tree roots that I shot. I did the sepia toner on the flower image and I did the selenium on the tree root shot. Now, when I was reading this, it says, um, at least according to Tim, to get about a stop and a stop and a half contrast increase using the sepia toner and about a half stop using the selenium. The first thing I did is I just went in and printed them straight and I didn't increase the contrast because like I said, these were kind of flat negatives, but I wanted to see what I could do just with the toning. So with the flower, I did a three second exposure. The filter was at two and a half and I developed it in just regular Dectol for a minute and a half. And this was using Ilford Multigrade 4 RC paper. So once I had the standard print for the flower down, I went ahead and toned the negative. And I did this by actually completely bleaching the negative, which is a little nerve wracking, but like I said, I wasn't too worried about these negatives per se, but I had never done this. And the only thing he did note in here was that with sepia, you have to be careful because the sepia toner will make the emulsion easier to damage. So I did try to be a little bit more careful with it. Now I used a potassium ferrocyanide bleach and then just a regular thiocarbamide sepia toner at the highest brown level, just because I didn't want to lose any more negative or uh, shadow density in the negative at all. So I bleached the negative, gave it a good wash and then put it in the toner then washed it again, ran it through some distilled water and hung it up to dry. After that, I did the exact same print, three seconds at a two and a half filter, same, everything else was exactly the same, decked off for a minute and a half. And here are the results of that. Now I'll put these up on the screen, um, but there's definitely an increase, oh, those are backwards, but there's definitely, an, there's definitely an increase in the contrast. And it's, I actually expected a little bit more from the sepia, it did do a good, good job. The other benefit of this would be, it's gonna make your negatives extremely archival. Then once I was all done with the sepia toning, I did the same thing with the tree root picture. This negative was actually a little bit denser. So this ended up being a four and a half second exposure at a two and a half filter. And then I left everything the same. So I used the strongest selenium that I had in my dark room. I've read anywhere from a one to one, uh, one part selenium toner to one part hypoclear, one to three. So I just used the strongest I had and I toned it for 10 minutes. And I was quite honestly pleased with the results. I thought the tree root one, actually it, it wasn't a bad picture to begin with, even at a two and a half filter. I did want more contrast and it really just added a nice sparkle to the highlights. 
So I was really, really pretty impressed with with the selenium. Like I said, it wasn't it wasn't in like an intense difference, but it definitely I really like this print. Even on this, I, I like this RC paper too. This multi grade four. I know they came out with a multi grade five. I might give that a try. So I'm pretty happy with the results on that. It is a little hard for me to say from this test which one increased more. My feeling is that the CPA did, but because they're two like really kind of different negatives, it's it's hard for me to tell. But I do think both definitely uh, have a benefit. And I think I would lean towards the selenium first because it's much less nerve wracking than just bleaching your negative away. But there's definitely something to be said about the, the sepia as well. And my thoughts on this are, it's not something I would just go to, but there are a lot of times where I will take, uh, especially in large format, I'll take a backup shot to make sure that, you know, I, I'm very klutzy if I drop things, you know, I've, I've, I've gone to like load my film in my, in my um, Jobo drum and dropped it in the dark. And like, then I'm running around on the floor. I mean, actually that just happened to me. <laughs> And I found the film and I got it back in there, but I'm like, what, like, what is wrong with you? But anyway, so a lot of things can happen. So I usually take a backup, I'll usually take a backup shot. And sometimes if I want a little bit more contrast or a little less contrast, I will develop that second shot for a different development time. I usually give them the exact same exposure. It's just kind of a backup in case something does happen. Um, it's just something that sometimes I will do. So I end up with a lot of duplicate negatives and sometimes I'll develop it with more contrast, but I'll even want more out of it and that's where i think something like this would uh, really come in handy or if you just have really flat negatives in general you could just um sepia or uh, selenium tone like the whole roll and it's not gonna it's not like such a difference that it's gonna hurt anything but it definitely added a nice again i'll scan these it definitely added for this one i almost this print looks really really good and i'm gonna do um I think I intend to do like a nice print of this because I really, really like it. And it's just, it's just got really nice contrast in general. And I liked it before, but that the, the selenium just bumped it up a little bit. So, so I definitely think that selenium toning and sepia toning and other methods of intensification for your negatives can have a lot of merit. And when I was researching this, there's a, the Moonrise over Hernandez by Ansel Adams, I believe he is said to have dipped the negative in selenium to get more contrast out of the um, the town or the, the front half of the negative. So he kind of locally did it. And I came across too where you could use like petroleum jelly and selenium and mix it together and localize and do things with selenium, which is kind of neat. So this reminded me, I was looking on, this was a while back, I was looking on John Sexton's um, Instagram page and there was a picture of Moonrise over Hernandez. There's a video, if you scroll down, not too far, maybe a dozen, dozen or so, you can see it. And what's so interesting about this, well, there's some videos for one, but then there's a final print that he did. Well, the, the picture was taken in 1941. Let me see. And then there's three different versions that he printed. One is in 1962 which is the final version, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what, that's, that's I think if I'm reading this right. The so the final one that he's showing here was in 1962. Then there was a, one printed in 1941, and then they show a straight print. And it's really amazing that, the, the difference, the difference, and how you can see like how how much work he put into making this final print and that how the straight print looked nothing like his final vision. And it just goes to show you how much over the years, you know, to get good in the darkroom, you have to spend a lot of time in the darkroom. And in 1941, that was a good print to him. That was the best he could do. And then fast forward 20 years or so, and it's like, that is a night and day difference. So, so if you're just starting out in the darkroom, don't get discouraged. It takes time. Like, go look at this post. You'd be like super surprised at what a straight print of that negative looks like compared to what he finished it in 1961 or 1962, sorry, with his final vision and what was finally good enough for him. So it took him 20 years to print that. 20 years of a lot of hours in the darkroom. So you know, to get good at anything, you uh, you have to spend a lot of time doing it. So just keep that in mind. 
And anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting as well as it kind of does pertain, um, cause you can locally um, selenium tone and things like that too, like I said. So, so let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Have you guys tried um, intensifying or selenium or sepia toning your negatives at all? Cause I thought this was the first time I've tried it and I've spent a lot of time in the dark room and never, Never wanted to mess with my negatives, but I kind of see it as a very valuable tool and I'm gonna explore it further, especially with the local local stuff. I think that could be really, really interesting, but let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and we will see you in the next video.